This is another look at some Ravens offensive concepts. In this case, we're going to be looking at a formation, a particular formation. The Ravens have used for you know many years, and every every team in the NFL and college and high, most high school teams use it too. It's called twin slot. You see a little diagram of it in the background there behind Lamar and J.K. on a mesh. The Ravens run it out of multiple personnel groups. Sometimes it's 21 personnel with Ricard in the slot, which is what you see on that diagram again. Sometimes it's 11 personnel. I, I think this is the Ravens' best hurry-up formation because I think they can manipulate the defense with motions and shifts quite easily out of it. I hope to show you that during the course of this video. I'm not going to show you every play. Um, so far, I don't have every Ravens play charted for the whole season. Still working on the Buffalo game only have 200 plays. I think there's like probably 40 more to go for the Bills game, maybe 50. But here's the data I got so far for twin slot. And twin slot, I do have a, a one play under center, but generally it's in the gun, like you see in that diagram. Um, and like you see on the screen right here. So I got 20 plays charted for twin slot so far, 14 pass and six run. Sometimes I probably make it seem like things are too predictable. Uh, in this case, as far as run pass, you know, it's it's close to being balanced. Uh, we are getting the ball to multiple guys out of this formation, and that's the part that I really like about it. It's not like only certain guys are getting the ball or only certain positions are getting the ball out of twin slot. You guys already know from watching other videos of mine and from the game that this is a shovel pass touchdown to J.K. Dobbins. We probably got Ricard motion in a little too long here. The ball probably needs to be snapped a little quicker. But in any case, shovel pass, you know, new concept, twin slot, Lamar in the gun, you know, gives us the ability to have him move, move around. Uh, we have said, you know, by the way, you know, to me, the ball should be snapped now. We're waiting too long for the ball to be snapped. We're not getting anything out of the motion. You know, we are in twin slot originally. And then as Ricard motions, it's basically becoming trips. Okay. But. Irregardless, the ball's got to be snapped a little sooner so that the defense has some thought of, you know, Ricard going and kicking out this end and us giving the ball to Dobbins, and then they have to adjust when that does not happen. So, cool concept, takes advantage of J.K.'s, you know, cut ability and, and ability to make people miss or at least bounce off tackles and get extra yards. This is probably one of my favorite plays. I have it listed as a backwards RPO. It's not actually an RPO. Lamar's not reading uh, the backside safety, I don't think, because of where his helmet's looking. But there's so much to be said about it. <clears throat> Tayron Johnson's lined up over the slot at first. Or he's lined up inside shade on the slot. So you would think this is going to be like a funnel coverage where they're trying to force our two guys, you know, funnel them into the safety. And then he ends up hedging down. And on the snap, Lamar, you know, puts the ball in the running back's gut. Looks like a little bit of a mesh, so these guys have something to react to. And Tayron Johnson, this was predetermined. I don't think this is based off the read. I, I don't. I don't think he. And I don't think he's cross reading Patrick Ricard, which you can do in certain situations. Uh, but it's possible because Ricard and the guard pull, which is what I love about this play. We're leaving the D end unblocked. The guard, right guard Zeitler's pulling. Ricard is pulling. You got the action with uh, J.K. and Lamar, and then we're getting this thing out to Duve. Um, in some space. I love it. I love the design. I would like to, you know, to me, Duvernay and Bateman being over here. And then Andrews and Ricard being down here. If we're going to have Ricard on the field, I this to me looks like a very balanced formation. Now, the only thing is, you know, we can't, we can't motion Andrews over because he's, you know, he's off the line. So I, and I, again, I, I would rather have Duve off the line so we can motion him because I feel like he's our jet sweep guy, and I'll show you a play uh, later on out of the same exact formation where we're motioning Duve, and uh, we're getting big runs out of Lamar on the QB power read concept. So you can look at Lamar's helmet if you wish. don't think he's really reading anything. I think this is just a play action. Again, I got it labeled as a backwards RPO. I think he understands, and the coaching staff understands, that when we get you know, all of this flow, by our guys, and especially Ricard. Teams are reading Ricard. Teams are keying on him. They're going to react to it. Tayron Johnson, to me, looks like that was predetermined because uh, maybe they don't respect Duvernay. I guess they don't watch film, but of course we know they do. All right, so this is twin slot before the motion and the shift. Ricard shifts over to the fullback slot. Bateman motions through. I love the, I love the idea because we're forcing the defense to put the nickel – well – 
in most cases, the defense is going to have the nickel defense to the field. In this case, we've got the twins down here. All right, so you've got a, a straight 4-4 four, four look is what you've got by the Jets. A 4-4 four, four, cover three look, and we really have this available to us. Uh, unfortunate that we were not able to complete this because you know Isaiah likely is capable of dragging defenders for an extra two, three, four yards um, after catching a football. I love how we're manipulating the defense getting them to move, but how can you do this? Well, you got to get up to the line quicker. you got to get up to the line quicker, and you've got to make sure you know, that you give your quarterback and your guys enough chance to motion or shift twice. I feel like this ball was thrown low intentionally, to be honest with you. I said this after the Jets game. People didn't disagree with me. And people didn't agree with me in the comment section. I feel like Lamar uh, is intentionally throwing this ball low, so he's not throwing it up here, giving the safety a chance to deck Isaiah Likely. Now, having said that, I don't think he meant to throw it here. I think he meant to throw it like, you know, maybe a foot and a half, two feet, you know, out and f a foot and a half to two foot up on a on a forty five degree angle like that. I don't think he meant to throw it that low, uh, but in any case, you'd still like to see Isaiah likely catch that football, even though that ball that ball was a little bit off target for where Lamar threw it. All right, Patriots game week three, twin slot. This time we've got Andrews in the slot, likely as the X. And then again, we've got our two athlete receivers up here. Little play action to JK, and it's RPO down in the flats. So I, I love the concept, man. Like, again, we can manipulate defenses with this, if you ask me. We can manipulate defenses. You've got the nickel defender to the field. So to, to the coverage, to the boundary, you've got the corner. You've got a linebacker. And you've got, you know, what looks like another linebacker. I think this is number 30, that undersized inside linebacker who's a pretty good player. <clears throat> Lamar, Reed, I think that's 30. That, that looks like he's that doesn't look like 30 in terms of size. Now he does jam Lamar, or he does jam Andrews while keeping his eyes on Lamar. There's just not enough guys to cover this if this guy doesn't expand with Andrews. And in reality, this could be an RPO where Lamar keeps it. You can read a lot of things on RPOs. You can read the D-end. That is actually number 30. You can read the D-end or number 30 in this case. You can read the inside linebacker. I offer to you that against the Cleveland Browns last year, Lamar sometimes was reading the inside linebacker. And if that inside linebacker went with the running back, Lamar just kept it and ran around the corner. You know, it was a neat little variation on the RPO that they used. In this case, there's just not enough guys to cover, you know, us down into the boundary. You can manipulate the defense, if you ask me, numbers-wise, by making them predetermine where the nickel defender is. A lot of teams have a nickel defender that's not capable of going back and playing strong safety or free safety, so they're not going to rotate back, you know, when you um, when you motion one guy across. <clears throat> Classic route by Andrews coming from the left-hand side. Again, you got the twins down here, and you got Andrews and Ricard as the slot. That's my favorite uh, version of this. Little play action to Drake, but not, you know, not much of it. And you got... Uh, clear pass interference or hold there on Duvernay that's not called, by the way. And you got uh, basically, you know, deep crossers that are running into each other intentionally to try to pick that defender that's, um, or rub that defender that's guarding Andrews. Looked like he was holding too. Actually, they did call it. One of my only problems with so many of these formations is we're just, you know, whenever you're running the over concept from the other side of the field, this essentially becomes just a clear out route down here. And Rashad Bateman's better than that. Like, we've got to figure out a way to, you know, call an angled hook or just a sit route in the middle of the field and let Bateman have a choice route back here, just like we do for Andrews sometimes, because he can work. Yeah, he had a terrible game against Buffalo, but I'll still stand there and say that he can do work against one-on-one -on -one coverage. I think the film shows it of him against Miami, by the way. Twin slot, you know, 14 passes. Six runs. We're not predictable in the formation, uh, but we are dangerous. Again, same alignment, fullback, tight end down to the bottom side, the slot side, athletes, receivers to the other side, and this is our play that has been really taking advantage of defenses, QB power read. This was the touchdown play against the Dolphins. My only issue with it is we can't bring Mike Davis in Every time we run this, we've got to do this with J.K. and Justice Hill. Even though Justice Hill, you know, isn't the best blocker, to be honest with you, we've got to do this with them so that we're not predictable in terms of who's in the game in twin slot. Hopefully that makes sense. 
It's a beautiful concept. You know, one that's been borderline unstoppable in most situations this year when Lamar keeps it. At some point, we got to give it. We got to give it to Duvernay and trust that the, you know, the lead blocker, whoever it is, Davis, JK, whatever, is going to be able to give him a side. But you can see the, what's happening. You get, I don't know if you guys got the frame there. It doesn't, yeah, you got a little bit of it. You got the, the outside linebacker or DN there has got to expand. So, I mean, this should be a keep every time. I'm just saying to stay balanced. To stay threatening with that motion, I would love to see uh, Duvernay get the ball some. We would teach Duvernay to grab his jersey with his right hand. Looks like he is. No, he's just he's just acting like he has a football. We would teach the kids to uh, to grab their jersey. You know, so grab your jersey, make it look like you're you know holding on to something. So your right shoulder movement is uh, somewhat different than just running, <clears throat> acting like you have the ball. Couple more plays out of twin slot. Uh, again, one of my favorite formations because you can motion and you can attack people. Now the only difference here is it's the same motion I just showed you. Well, there's a couple of differences, right? You got Andrews in the slot, an actual receiver out here. So you know, as opposed to Andrews and Ricard being there, so this is definitely not going to be the sweep to Duvernay because we don't have appropriate blockers out here, in my opinion. And again, I think we've got to do those things, even if. In a, in a particular situation, it maybe isn't um, advantageous, advantageous to us to do so. When you get the end zone angle, you'll see the alignment of this defensive end. To me, there's got to be some calls where if we, get, if we get the defensive end inside of the tight end and you can easily pin him down, which you can, we gotta run, we got to run the sweep, even if we're in the pistol alignment. We, we appear still to be somewhat predictable uh, based on the backfield alignment. And just so you understand... On this one, when Duvernay's motion, look at the running back. He's to the side of Lamar. Why? Well, that's so, in case it's a give, he can go out there and lead block for Duvernay, right? As opposed to this play, same formation except slightly different personnel, we're in the pistol. Why? Well, because we're running speed option back to the backside, and so we want to, to have that running back in a position where he can actually you know, get in position to receive the football. The plays are about more than just you know, the personnel for real. People always talk about like all oh, that running back slow or such and such. It's about more than that. It's about consistent alignment and not giving away your intentions just by the uh, the backfield alignment or the receiver's alignment. All right, last player, last two down near the goal line. Again, you got motion left to right. And again, you got Ricard and Andrews. I'm not sure why Andrews is spread out so wide on this F counter play. I, I feel like you want to make things look consistent. The, uh, the only thing I can consider is that maybe we're, we're hoping to get a safety apexed out of here over the top to help with Andrews, but it doesn't look like the Patriots are worried about that one-on-one. -on -one. And then motion left to right by Duve. And I like to play. I do. I just think the motion by Duve has got to be faster, and it's got to be realistic. That motion to me looks like, you know, I know I'm not getting the ball, and, and he's not a selfish guy at all. That's not what I'm saying. It's just maybe he needs to start wider, you know, so he can go full speed as opposed to starting – at the top of the numbers, maybe he needs to be slightly outside the bottom of the numbers so he can hit this full speed and actually make it look like we're threatening with that motion. F counterplay, Ricard leading. You know, I love the concept. I think Falele just loses his guy. I think it's Falele. He loses 30. 30's helmet is right here. Falele's locked onto him now. And then he loses that guy. I mean, there's other guys involved in the play, too. So that's one of the formations the Ravens are running a lot of is twin slot. I'm not sure if you guys like formation videos. Um, I'm just trying to give you as much intel as I can. It's in the database that I'm, I'm keeping. So why not provide the information to you all? Uh, let me know if you have any other thoughts on formations. Uh, we're trying to give you as much intel and data as possible. There's other people in my Discord, Patreons, that are, that are helping with this information. Tyrod, Frank. Other people are, are, are cutting up plays or labeling it with me, so it's always fun. If you're interested in all in joining the Patreon slash Discord to support me uh, in those efforts, that'd be wonderful. You can do it for $5 a month on YouTube or, or um, Patreon. Uh, there's a link in the description to both of those ways to support. Uh, you don't have to do so, but if you wish to help with any of this or if you would like to learn how to help with it, 
please let me know. It's something that kind of comes natural to me because I've spent, you know, thousands of hours doing it um, in my personal life as a coach. And now to do this for the Ravens just seems like a natural extension because I feel so passionate about them as a Ravens fan. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Twin slot formation, six runs, 14 passes. I think this is one of the Ravens formations that they can use to go hurry up um, if they ever choose to do so, which I think there's some evidence out there that we need to do at times. Appreciate you guys checking out the video this morning.